Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ruin Snow. We're going to be exploring Magic the Gathering Top 10 Cauldron. We're not just doing cauldrons, but cauldron cards itself. There are several throughout the whole Magic realm. So let's begin with the Top 10. And now, at number 10. And at number 10, we first we're going to start with Cauldron Haze. So it's not actually a cauldron, but a cauldron related card. And it is from Eventide, and it is an uncommon. So one color, so white or black says choose any number of target creatures each of those creatures gains persist until another turn so it says when it's put into a graveyard from play if it had no minus minus one counters on it return to play under its owner counter with a minus minus one counter on it again this isn't a true cauldron but this cauldron haze is the result of a cauldron so we're going to start with actual cauldrons now and let's begin with number nine and at number nine, we have Cauldron of Souls. It's from Shadowmere, Commander 2016, and Anthology. And as you can see, it's also a rare. It costs five mana for this cauldron. That's right, the first one of many on this list. It says, choose any number of target creatures. Each of those creatures gain persist. Again, we're going dealing with the persist. So this is why it's at number nine. I don't think it's a great ability for magic, but when it comes to cauldrons, it is at number nine. And it's target creatures. Each of those creatures can get it's, any number, five mana, and then tap it. Again, uh, no, this isn't a good card in general, just remember that. So let's move on to number eight. And here we are at number eight, Skull Mead Cauldron, and it's from Dissension, and it's an uncommon. This Skull Mead Cauldron is actually really cool. It costs four mana, and you can tap it for constantly gaining one life, or discard a card, and you gain three life. Again, we're talking about Cauldron, so in itself, it's not a great card, but again, it's really cool. If you can keep drawing cards, you can keep gaming three life if you're desperate this Cauldron. And it's Skull Mead, so it's kind of like a food, so it's giving you life. And the saying is, once tasted, the flavor of Skull Mead lingers in the throat, a secret brand of the guilt for those who partake in forbidden pleasures. Kind of a cool saying, but again, this is why I hear it. it is a number eight, so let's move on to number seven. And at number 7 we have Scalding Cauldron from Throne of Eldraine, and it is a common. I'm surprised this is a common because this card is actually really really cool. For 1 mana, you bring it out, and then for 3 it says sacrifice it, it deals 3 damage to target creature. By that time when you have that 3 mana, that 3 damage actually will make a huge difference at that time. Again, I think this is a very very good common, and the cauldron is really cool saying, again, it's a witch's trick, the cauldron full of pain. I wouldn't dump it on anyone but the wicked. <laughs> really cool saying. Let's move on to number six. And at number six, we have Ice Cauldron from Ice Age, and it is a rare. And look at all that writing. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, so I'll just read it for you. It says, put a charge counter on Ice Cauldron and put a spell card face up on Ice Cauldron. Note that the type and amount of mana used to pay this activation cost. Use this ability only if there is no charge counters on Ice Cauldron. You must play that spell card as though if it were in your hand. Remove a charge counter, charge counter from Ice Cauldron to add that mana and type last used to put a charge counter on Ice Cauldron to your mana pool. This mana pool is usable only to cast the spell on top of Ice Cauldron. Wow. Basically, you can just play a spell based on the amount of charge counters on it. Really cool because it gives you that extra card in your hand and something you can use in the future and really need. This picture is also really cool. I don't know what he's trying to do with a rat. But anyway, it's a picture by Dan Fraser. He's a really cool artist from Magic the Gathering. So all around, this is really cool. This is why it's at number six. Uh, it's not very used very much in the Magic world. It's not the best. But again, we're talking about cauldrons. So let's move on to number five, which is halfway down our list. And as I just said, halfway down on the list at number 5 is Bubbling Cauldron from Magic 2014. Iconic Masters, Jumpstart, or, and it is an uncommon. Cost 2 mana, says 1, sacrifice a creature, you gain 4 life. Again, there's so many abilities and everything in the Magic world, this could be alone in itself really cool. And it also says, sacrifice a creature named Festering Newt, each opponent loses 4 life, and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Again, great combo. I like this. Very good combo. Very good card. This is why it's a number five. And it's a bubbling cauldron. Really cool picture. Again, this is why we're at the, again, I'm going to repeat myself, cauldron top 10. Really good. Like I said, uncommon. Uh, generally, I would recommend this card buying it from Jumpstart. I like that picture a lot. So let's move on to number four. Now, at number four, I just like the picture in itself, which is Cauldron from Core 2021. And it's an uncommon. So for those new players to Magic, you will know this card. Basically, it costs one mana to bring it out, but it also says one color, so one black. Sacrifice a creature, you gain one life, and draw a card. 
that's a fair deal if you're going to lose a creature anyway in a battle you can use this cauldron and just might as well draw an extra card so again this is why it's at number four because this ability is really strong really cool if you have to sacrifice anyway you might as well gain a life and draw a card right and it says the best recipes start with reliable cookware <laughs> i'm not sure about that picture it doesn't look very reliable to me but again this is really it's really cool but let's move on to number three now, at number three, we have Cauldron Dance. It's actually not a cauldron, but the Cauldron Dance. It's from Invasion, as you can see, and it's an uncommon. We're going old school on you, and I really like this card. Even though it costs six mana, this Cauldron Dance has a really good ability. If you look at it, it says, Play Cauldron Dance only during combat. Return target creature a card from your graveyard to play. That creature gains haste. Return it to your hand at the end of your turn. Put a creature card from your hand into the play. That creature gains haste. Put it into your graveyard at the end of turn. So you're doing a little switcheroo for six mana. That could really be helpful if you're playing, I don't know, any kind of deck to put creatures in your graveyard or not in your graveyard. Either way, this is why it's at number three. I really like this card. This is good. I'm surprised they haven't reprinted it. it costs six mana for that uncommon. I think that is completely a fair trade. I like the picture. This is cool. But we're, let's move on to number two, though. Uh, number two, it was really hard to put this Storm Cauldron, not at number one. It's from Alliances, 6th and 7th edition, and it is a rare. It costs five mana, but look at this. During each player's turn, that player may put one additional land into play. Whenever land is tapped for mana, return that land to its owner's hand. Boom, you can clear out all the land on the board and bring it to your hand. I think this card is super good. I, in fact, uh, when I was playing Alliances, when it was standard at the time, no one really played this card. I can't believe how strong this card is, especially with all the abilities and everything now. That Why is no one playing this card? It's amazing. I'm going to try to make a deck around it, but this card is, like I said, unbelievable. For cauldrons, this is really good. Just not in general, this card is really good. Fortunately, I had to make a hard decision to put it at number two and not number one. So let's just go on to the best cauldron in the top ten, and let's do it. And at the top, and number one, is the Cauldron of Eternity from Throne of Eldraine, and it's a Mythic Rare. As you can see, wow. We're going to read the card in a moment, but look at that. Ten colorless and two swamp. Oh my god. Have you ever seen a legendary artifact have that base cost? No, I don't think so. Again, I like the artwork. Look at that. That's really cool. And there's actually quite a history behind this uh, cauldron as well. But it also says, this spell costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. So again, you can have ten creatures in your graveyard and it only costs two, but I just like to laugh because of the base price for it. Whenever creature control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. So again, this can be, if you're training, playing against a deck death deck, this card is very good. Again, it's not the best card in Magic, as I've repeatedly said. But for cauldrons, this is the best cauldron in the entire Magic world. It also has... For two colors and a swamp, pay two life, return target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield. Only activate this ability. Only anytime you can cast a sorcery. So even if you just have it untap, like, wow, any creature, any creature for three. Again, I know there's other cards better, but we're talking about cauldrons. Again, this is a really cool card. It's recent, so it's Throne of Eldraine, so I'm surprised I didn't even see, see this card, I guess, very much in the current standard format on Arena or any kind of like that. But I guess because, it's, I don't know, I guess it's not that good. But again, for Cauldrons, I, I'm standing by it. This is the number one card. So I hope you enjoyed the top ten Cauldron. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful night.